signal processing using Excel. What we're going to do is we're going to create a very simple worksheet. In that worksheet, we'll be able to plot sine waves. So this column is going to be time. I'm going to start off time t equals zero, and then I'm going to go to 6.25 e minus uh, six as my sample rate. Okay. So I've now created a column of time. By using this function, then just dragging it down, you increment time. What I'm going to do over here, I'm going to add in a plot, a line plot, okay, and series, and I'm going to go finish. Okay, so I haven't actually put any data in there yet. This column here, I'm going to have as my uh, signal one. Okay. Above it, I'm going to have a magnitude for signal one of one volts. Okay, so here I need to write an expression that will allow me to plot, say, a sine wave. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say whatever that magnitude is up here, multiply it by sine two times. There's an inbuilt function pi. Okay, so that's 2 times pi times 1000 hertz, okay, multiplied by the time over here. Close bracket, enter. Right, there's one thing I need to do here. This number here, B2, needs to be locked. So I'm going to put a dollar symbol at the beginning of B and at 2. So it doesn't matter what we do now, if we drag this down here, we're calculating part of that sine wave. Okay, so let's go back to this diagram. Source data. Let's add a series. Let's give it a name, signal one. Let's give it some data. Okay, and let's give it reference to the time value. Okay, so there we go. We've now effectively just started to get our plot together. Uh, in this case, we may not need to have a legend on here. Um, uh, you can turn them off uh, and then get a better data plot. As you can see, we've only got part of the sine wave. We're only rising here and we haven't hit our peak magnitude. So what we need to do really is to scale these down quite considerably. So I'm copying them down to, let's go to five, where was it? There we go, five. Uh, that's at row 84. Back to here. Source data, change that 30 to 84. Okay, and we've now got the first half of a sine wave. So as you can see, it's very, very straightforward to create a sine wave. Uh, let's create a second signal now. Let's create a cosine wave and we'll plot just the same first half of it. So I'm gonna have another magnitude here as well. Let's go for one. And we'll call this signal two. Okay, now I can take this expression and put it here. And I can simply change sine to cos. Okay, and hopefully everything is the same. This green one is time, so that needs to move back to the A column. So what I'm going to do on here is I'm going to put a dollar on the A. That means it will lock and only use that column the next time I copy it. So if I drag that down, okay, we've now got another, another piece of data. Source data, add, let's give it a name, and let's give it some values. Okay, hit enter. And as if by magic, we've now got half of a sine wave and half of a cosine wave. So as you can see, it's very straightforward to be able to create um, these signals. What we're going to do in this case, I'm going to change this equation now, because I don't want one kilohertz. I'm going to want eight kilohertz. Okay, and um, we'll now drag that down. And there we have it. We've now got, okay, a, cos a sine wave for the first part, 
and then we've got our cosine wave. So now if we want to uh, look at amplitude modulation, for example, we can do AM, okay, and I'm going to say that equals that cell multiplied by that cell, okay, and we'll pull that all the way down there. And rather than plot it on this graph, I'm going to copy the graph and I'll paste it here. Okay, so we've now got two different graphs. This one, I'm just going to edit uh, some of the fields. So we've originally got data on B and C, and we've got our AM now on D. So if I go to source, source data on here, okay, I can remove signal 2, signal 1, uh, what I can do is I can change that. Okay, uh, I'll just do it quickly here. Rather than change, going and changing the fields, I'll just change the B to a D in there. And there we go. We've now got a modulated cosine wave on a sine envelope. So there we go. Very quick example of spreadsheet signal processing. I'm going to give that a quick um, copy. I'll just save that one where we are. If I now go to my example, I've got a slightly more complicated example here. I have my time. I've got pi defined as a constant in the top corner. I've got magnitude for um, a signal. I've got frequency for the signal, a thousand, and then I've calculated the values. I've done the same for a carrier. And then I've calculated AM. So over here, we can see our sine wave and our sine wave carrier and we have an AM signal. What I've done in the next column is I've calculated a phase angle shift based upon the, the data signal. So it's uh, whatever that column is, C, which is, my carry, which is my data signal, divided by an absolute plus one. So I'm, I'm only concerned with going up and down in phase but I'm not concerned in, in, in negative phase angles, and I'm multiplying by 180. So here we can see a phase angle going up and down, and this signal now is phase modulation, okay? So it's picking up that phase angle and dropping it in here, and I've divided by 180 and then multiplied by pi, so I'm converting it back to radians, and then here you've got a simple sine carrier. So if we have a look at that waveform, okay, we have this signal here. So as you can see, it starts out of phase, and then the signal gets wider and wider, and then narrower and narrower. So it's following that sine wave uh, that's our data that we're encoding. Just for good measure, I've also done frequency modulation. So I'm moving the, the, uh, the carrier frequency proportional to the data. So we can see quite a lot of difference here between frequency modulation, phase modulation, and amplitude modulation. Okay, so there we go. It's quite easy, quite straightforward once you get to grips with the Excel. On sheet two, I've got a sine wave, a fundamental, and then I've got a third, a fifth, a seventh, and a ninth harmonic with varying magnitudes. I've summed them all together and I get this waveform. So what we can see here, the blue is our fundamental component, pink is our third harmonic, and so on. When you add them all together, you end up with this brown waveform. Okay, so it's tending towards a square wave. Add infinite phase uh, frequencies together uh, according to the same rules, according to the equation in the sheet, you would get a perfect square wave. So there we go, spreadsheet signal processing.